Salam Aleikum. I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. I like Good morning. Yes, Good like afternoon to, to me like and everyone on the East Coast. It's Tim Heidecker calling in from New York. Brooklyn, New York. I'm coming in from Williamsburg here, right by McCarran Park. As you can see, the Williamsburg Bridge behind me. I'm on Zoom in my room. In my room. <laughs> there you go. In my room. I'm on Zoom. Wow, that was pretty good. I remember writing that song a long time ago in my room. Right. Wow. I, that could have been that could have been a hit. That could have been uh, uh, back in, back with uh, Irving Berlin. Um, here I am. It's a very good impression. You've been Tim. working on that for a while. Yeah. Oh yeah, I used to do a Brian Wilson back when I was in high school. Wow. Wow. I remember hearing uh, Rubber Soul. That was the one that turned me on the idea of a whole album being <laughs> made of a great song. Are you a fan of Phil Spector? Woo. You like Phil Spector? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Phil Spector. He taught me all the things I know about making music. What do you say when people call <laughs> you a genius? They say, they say you're a genius, Brian. Is this true? Well, I might be, depending on if I play the right chords on the piano. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> if it was just your mouth, you'd look exactly like it. <laughs> well, you know why, do you know why he talks like well, that? Because well, I left, lost hearing in my left, right ear because my dad beat the shit That's out of me. That's what it was. Yeah, yep, yep. exactly. Yeah, she's well, yeah. talking Allegedly. to his well, look, look, Allegedly. look, 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 look. Getting right let's into it. Let's relax. I know, we man. Get into we got a lot to if talk about. If it was about. up to me, we'd, we'd just have a, a two-hour ASMR uh, <laughs> Mike Love fiesta. <laughs> God. That would be fine by me. I was enjoying that, Vic. We're back with Office <laughs> Hours. We've got Vic Berger behind me. With me, with through with Zoom, you. with me. Hey, Tim, how's it <laughs> mowing? <laughs> Is that a mow? Hold on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's the sounds of summer. It's the sounds of summer. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, DJ Doug Pound is wherever he is. He's in Europe with the Eric Andre. Is he in the Deutschland? Mess. Oh, where is that right now? I think he's in England. In the UK. Mm, we'll see him on Glasgow. the 20th. Fuck you. He'll be back. <laughs> but uh, in his stead, it can only it, we need two men to take the place of one DJ. And that is a longtime friend, uh, fans of, uh, I've been fans of their show. I've done their show a number of times. Great, po one of the few podcasts I bother to listen to. Uh, the Joker men are here, Evan and Ian. Here we are. Hello. Thank you for having us, Tim. Here Thank we are. you. Good. <laughs> Pleasure's all ours. Now, if you're not familiar with the Joker men, the, these boys began their podcast journey by delving into the the uh, later, I'd say, the mid period onward uh, career of none other than Bob Dylan, uh, which. Well, was was a revelation to me. It turned me on to so many great aspects of his uh, his discography and his life. And you talk about it in such an intelligent and funny and, and entertaining way. But you can't just talk about Bob. So what happened after 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 you ran ran the course with Bob? Well, we we spent about two years trying to wring every possible ounce of material out of Bob Dylan that we could, yeah. uh, even to the point where we were doing episodes like ranking the back, the back covers, covers of his <laughs> album. <back> <laughs> 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 People <laughs> say it's one of their favorite episodes. Uh, honestly, it was a pretty good one from what I remember. Uh, but you know, What was the standout back cover? Well, just to, oh, Mercy, just to go number one. To oh, Mercy. Yeah, Oh, Mercy, he's wet and he has a, a little straw hat. <laughs> got a little hat and he's kind of looking up. He's got a sort of a mousy look uh, to him. Uh, but uh, the other one was Knocked Out Loaded just has the same cover yes. on the back. Oh, the front of Knocked oh, Out Loaded is the back or... of Knocked Out Loaded. Oh, no. Just identical. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, it shows Save you about how much effort way, they put into that one. <laughs> uh, but we did that for a couple years, and then we did uh, Lou Reed and John Cale in the Velvet Underground for about two years. And uh, now here we are in the early days of the third series of Joker Men with the boys of summer themselves, 
Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys. America's number well, one surfing band. That's right. Wait, so wait, what was your first episode? <laughs> the first uh, series you did? What was it? Who was it on? Bob, Bob, Dylan. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan and then the Beach Boys. But was there someone else though? Well, yeah, it was the Velvet Underground. Yeah, yeah. oh, so I wasn't listening that, ten every, seconds I, ago. Even I, I even I, I know. So, but I was just following that logic. Well, I know, but oh. I was thinking of Michael. What were you Vic's thinking about? working on drops. I got over all there. kinds of stuff going on. But that's what? Okay. What's the connection? I guess. Like, uh, what? Le- why did you that end up choosing these three? It's all good music to use our our parlance uh i mean we 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 started with bob uh you know just because he was our number one guy i think and but you know you're a bob dylan fan you're also a fan of some of the other classic singer songwriters uh rock instrumentalists uh and and geniuses really and Mm -hmm. we saw that with lou and john and we're certainly seeing that with brian do do you have a way to define what you guys consider the joker men mindset yeah well it's it's basically i think the uh, the optimistic outlook that it's possible, dimly possible, that your your artists that you like might make something great, well past the point where you've given up hope on on such mm. a prospect. Which uh, I think with Dylan, it was like a great uh, example of this because the story is so evident. Like we started the show right when he was putting out Rough and Rowdy Ways, his most recent studio lp yeah, it's very I good Great. and uh, a lot of people you know in the 80s it's unthinkable that that such a thing would have happened so it's like yeah. you're wrong and uh we this is about you know us no, not wanting to die having been wrong <laughs> <laughs> exactly so so it play it it it, it does play to, to, well, men, but I guess women as well, but all kinds of people who are m- maybe fearing their own irrelevance. Very much life. so. Yeah. It's... And say, is there hope for me? Right. If I had sort of my glory days, uh, another Jokerman mindset guy, Bruce Springsteen right there. Probably there you go. For you. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Bruce's last couple uh, records have been, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know that he's had a rough and rowdy in his uh, pocket recently, no, but, but he's, still, he's still... He's doing more of that kind great. of... You know what he's doing is he's he's pulling that uh, that Elvis Costello move. Yeah, uh, yeah. Where he's covers. becoming like a musicologist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's the, like an expert on music now. The thing about all the people we've covered is that none of them quit music. I think all, everybody yeah. we've ever talked about is somebody who they'll die doing what they're doing. Yeah. Most likely, like they're not. Something will happen where they can't, but they're not just gonna right. hang it up. Well, I that's think, funny. Yeah. It's, Go Can I just to... interrupt real quick, or not interrupt? I, I'm <laughs> it's your show, yeah. for Christ's sake. <laughs> but uh, just just so I don't forget, and then we'll talk. We're going to talk all about the Beach Boys today. We've got um, a musical guest coming in, and I think there's still a little confusion about who that is. Matt, we'll get it. We'll get should to that. be Johnny Cosmo, as far as I know. Johnny Cosmo, but we're hearing mixed He's reports not here yet. about p- possible uh, somebody taking his place. I don't know. We'll see. But I grabbed this little quote because I guess I don't think this has anything to do with why you guys launched the Beach Boys as your new, new season. But they're back in the news because there's like a documentary about them out. Yeah, coming, coming out you know? on the, the Disney. What app. is it? The 50th Disney anniversary plus. of the Beach Boys or something like that? Is that what it, 60, what it is? I Probably think. 60 over 60. Or more. Yeah. yeah, it was 62, okay. something like that. 64? Yeah, 62 was the first record. So, was, yeah, yeah, big year for them. Um, yeah, we were um, involved with producing that with for Disney. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So they're 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 um, <laughs> they're doing a lot of press, and of course, the only people doing it, the Beach Boys are are uh, Mike and Bruce. Bruce, yeah. Right. When we when we when we talk about the Beach Boys, we're talking about <laughs> Mike and Bruce right now. Bruce Johnston, Bruce right? Rad. <laughs> yeah. So this this quote, they they did some press for whatever reason at Abbey Road. You know, they're out there at Abbey Road doing press for this movie. Yeah, what famous, was that about? Famous Beach Boys recording <laughs> site, Abbey Road. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was a quote. They were talking about Brian, and we could talk about this. Brian, as as many know, that um, he is uh, he's been put into a uh, what's it called? A conservative, conservatorship. <laughs> conservatorship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they asked Mike about that, and this is the quote I saw in the in the article today. It said, Brian remembered things that I had forgotten from high school at times, said Love. His long-term memory is right there. He does need the help medically, but I think as long as he's alive, he'll play that piano. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I just, well, first of all, it's, it's true to what you just said about these guys will 
play music till they're dead. See, but I, it's I have always, a di- always an oh. always an inelegant quote from uh, Mike Love, from right? Mr. Always Mike a, Love, like I'm, yeah. Little, he, a little, there's always um, a little dig in there, a little backwards, a backhand compliment. Yeah, it's but like, I have a different take on it though. Like I think Mike and Bruce and that that era or that section of the Beach Boys will will play forever. Mike just likes doing it. He likes the money. He likes the attention. He's probably narcissistic, you know, and he loves all that shit. But Brian, I feel like Brian doesn't really have it in him. I feel like there's such a group around him to make him create all the time. And I don't know if he, I don't, I just, just my view looking at him on stage is like, he's so uncomfortable. It doesn't, yeah. does he really love it? Or is he just has this machine built you know that he has to kind of keep up, but um, but I think he's kind of like retired now since his wife passed away. Yeah, at this point he's yeah. he's done. He's got to um, be done. Yeah. But but you know he he has oh boy there. But that's he is. a picture of Brian Beautiful. Wilson. Look at the goatee. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the goatee. That man. goatee. Well, I, I will say though that uh, Brian has had for decades now a very strong support system of yeah. people who really do love him and understand his music and that's how smile was able to be put on stage yeah. and record re-recorded in 2003 With the wonderment uh yeah and so he's in, in he's surrounded by people who are really supportive so i don't think he's like being pushed out there yeah. and jabbed with his yeah yeah i i know i know uh, it just looks i mean I, I don't i don't know either and this gets into speculation territory but there was talk a few years ago about like that you know th- they have a big family. I don't know. They had like they had like a lot of kids. Yeah, yeah. Br- the Brian. And yeah, his he wife. still has like young kids now. I think. Right? Like, yeah, and like there was sort of this rumor, sort of like, well, she keeps him on the road because you know a lot of these guys. It's like I'm sure he's fine with money, but it, you know you got to kind of keep stay out there and bring their light their lifestyles very expensive so i did hear rumblings of like gee i don't know how much brian is uh a participant in this decision to be constant because they toured a lot they did yeah and and i think the last couple of years there he's look at the shirt look at that the shirt those are uh shirts i think he designed too i think he designed My, his does own he sh- design his he, own he works with that company and they design oh, wow. what's in his mind psychedelic yes. <laughs> we gotta get we gotta get some of those yeah he's a very psychedelic guy maybe, maybe they'll spawn what does he just pod. say pay what does he say uh pay uh, uh, paisley <laughs> paisley more like more Paisley. It's like red. you put in AI, like more Paisley. But I like that he has Bruce wearing them now. Too. Bruce is in them. Yeah, Bruce is just his little mini. And when they toured the 50th reunion with Brian, even Brian had to wear it. So it's, it's like it's Mike's <laughs> uniform. That's Mike owns Beach the Boys. name. I love the Mike Love hat too. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Yeah, he's well branded. You know what? Let me just say, we should take a zoomer real quick. Make sure uh, all systems are a go. That's a great. I think this idea. is going to be the vibe of the show, though. It's just going to be four nerds talking about the Beach Boys. <laughs> it's basically so. Jokerman. So thank you for right. allowing us to come in and take <laughs> yeah. over office hours. <laughs> well, the mindset I'm is hard. And at some point, I'm going to fully disassociate and probably, <laughs> you know, Let's when you guys start talking about root beer, <laughs> um, you go get a slice. Well, that's going. I'll go get too. a slice. Sawyer, By the well, way, Matt, this is a per- little personal between you and me, oh, but yeah. I'm st- I'm standing near off a of, of Bedford in in Williamsburg, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, well, by God, they got a uh, Joe's Pizza on there. On yeah, that Bedford now. Yeah, you used to have, have to go all the way to the West Village for that. No, and that, I'll tell you what, for my money, that's the best pizza there is in the world. Best single Hello, slice in New York, mm. definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Sawyer just Joe's. I don't understand. It's Sawyer Lowe. I want to talk about I'm in hog music. Heaven. <laughs> Yeah, Here's oh, a beach I'm, a, fan. I'm a big uh, Jokerman fan, so uh, yeah. this is cool for me. What's up, dude? my favorite podcast Hello. for sure. Wow, whoa, whoa, I almost whoa. went and put on my uh, Jokerman T-shirt, but I thought that'd be a bit too lame. So it's in the <laughs> in the club. <laughs> oh, I'm you say it's your favorite hat. podcast? Is that because you consider Office Hours a uh, a TV show, like show. you should? That's Television right. show. That's, that's right. <laughs> so this Vic, is. This how many is times good. do you think I was uh, recognized in New York between last night and this the show? Oh my God! Three. Well, but I well, it would probably. I don't think you Question went was out. Question to Vic, but, but um, that's <laughs> one guess. Um, between last night, I'm gonna say zero times because I bet you're in your hotel room the whole time. Evan, Ian, you want to throw in a number? Ooh, one, <laughs> four, one up from Vic. Yeah, <laughs> one up from. The Vic. answer is yeah. that the zoomer is correct. It is three. Three, wow. three wow. men, right. three individual men one, at different two, points. Three. Although I will say I can add a fourth if you want to. Uh, I walked past Delicate Steve. Do you know Delicate Steve? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I walked past him, and he, uh, I didn't see him. I recognized him, but I didn't, re- you know, I didn't put it together. And then he wrote me and said, hey, I just saw you walking by. Nice. Uh, I am too busy for that. Were you here when he, hangs, he was but... he was in here before? Remember that? Yeah, he did yeah. the show. I didn't know if Tim was on. All right, so you have a question there about uh, for the Joker? Yeah. Well, I I, um, I think perhaps like myself because I love the Jokerman. I uh, spe- you guys might spend a lot of time listening to old music. Is that safe to say? Safe to say. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Thanks for the question. Old music. <laughs> Pretty right. good. I don't know. I just wanted a recommendation. What's what? What have you been enjoying that came out in the last five years? Oh, recent uh, music. Recent music. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, gee. Um, the uh, I'll drop. throw out one. I, I like. Sandro Perry is like sort of an underrated guy. There's this one, life. this one record called uh, I think it's called In Another Life. It's like it's like if if uh, Van Morrison had like a computer. It's really good. In Another Life. <laughs> Van Morrison had a computer. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah. I could hear I could hear Van Morrison singing in another life. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he definitely Astral has a computer though. He's on Facebook all the time. So. Uh, well, he he would prefer not to be. <laughs> well, he's trying not to. Yeah, he's, he's trying to. He's on a detox program. Right. Uh, I would say uh, I'll I'll ride for for Little Wings, Kyle Field, who uh, is uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, and uh, well, you know he's got a new record coming out shortly. We were talking about trying to get him on Office Hours with us, but he's playing up in San Luis Obispo tonight. Uh, but any Little Wings record uh, that you can get your hands on from the last, I guess the m- most recent one at this moment is called People. But he's got a new one coming out on Perpetual Doom, uh, great little indie label, um, in like two, three weeks. So give him a spin. And the Lemon Twigs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Michael and Brian. Yeah. Michael and Brian, friends of the new album. Friends is of the so good. Show. Yeah, their, their album is really, really good. And their last album so is it. the same. It's, it's also really good. I haven't dug into the new one. That 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 much, but that one before, everybody's harmony. Everybody, everything harmony. Every, uh, yeah, uh, everything every, is everything harmony. harmony. Holy cow! That is a major piece of work. Yeah, they can yeah. just reel them reel yeah. them off it's like, like it's pop. like it's nothing yeah. exactly. I was li- I just yeah, uh, came up the like other day. Sick. Uh, Ronnie Diodario. Yeah, and sure. I, was I was like, oh shit, that's like their dad. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, it makes sense, you know. Runs the family. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Just like with Murray and Brian. Well, hopefully <laughs> not just like Murray and Brian. Just like Murray and Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I wonder I wonder how to how to when we've already began the conversation about the Beach Boy. You guys are in a kind of a tough spot because you're you're mucking through the fur you're you're starting from the top and there are I mean, there's a tremendous amount of records before you get to you know, pet sounds, I guess, or yeah, I think there's about know, mid-period uh, gold. Well, pet sounds there's came a- out today. Today's the anniversary of pet sounds coming out. Apparently, so sixty-four years. Yeah, something. Sixty-four years. Insane. insane. Yeah, just just a fun bit of uh, coincidence. But a mug, a mug, <laughs> is it root beer time? Let's do it. <laughs> is that what you're interrupting to? <laughs> Matt wants some root beer. Yeah, um, but we, we there's a lot of muck in there. There's a lot of, I mean. Oh, is that me? I didn't know that was me. Sorry about that. Well, hey, you don't <laughs> I need didn't to know apologize. I, I, I like just having that going. We could have that play for the whole whole pod, as far as I'm concerned. Well, in the muck is that root beer song, which is like a huge, <laughs> become a really focal point of the show. We've kind of pivoted actually to becoming a root beer podcast too. <laughs> And so every I mean if you every if, other if episode. you compare it to uh, if you compare it to the Beatles which I think we all we have to right we have to compare the American Beatles, to the that's Beatles. Right. Uh, oh, their 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 63 to 65 output 60 is yeah. like there's not quite as much crap in the Beatles catalog. There isn't, and we've been talking about that on the show actually, because Brian has been <laughs> chug a lug. Um, yeah. All right, what do, you, what do you have there? What's your first option? We got the A and W. Yeah, Classic. we have the big three today: A and W, Mug, and uh, and Barks. <laughs> Barks. This is the Pepsi Cola brand root beer. Mm. It's good. Let's have root beer float. Give it a give it a sip. Let's uh, and uh, Matt Vic. I, I want to hear your guys because we've done this. We we know what each other think yeah. about this root beer, but we'd love to hear from some. I like it. Not too sweet. No caffeine. Huh? Yeah, I was gonna say not too Pretty sweet. Smooth. No caffeine. Uh, I'm in. I'm impressed. Interesting. There's no lingering aftertaste for me. Mm. I can't taste it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's interesting, you guys. I mean, it's, you know, it's not really going with the, uh, we, we, we haven't even explained why <laughs> we're drinking root beer. Artisanal brand. This is ridiculous. There's, so on the first Beach Boys record, Servant Safari from 1962, there's a song called Chug, Chug a Lug. Lug. Which is yes. we maybe Vic was playing that a moment ago. <laughs> yes, we heard it. Again. We heard it. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Larry, he's just Larry. always like, oh, she'll hear him. Is he talking about the three stooges? Chimp, <laughs> <laughs> Chimp's favorite thing at the root beer stand. <laughs> I, I wonder if there's a Beach Boys song about the three stooges and like classic <laughs> comedy. It, it seems funny. like there it should be. It should have been on Abbott Love You. And Costello and the three, and the yeah, Marx exactly, Brothers yeah, too. Yeah, right. the Johnny Carson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, it's the yeah. Johnny Carson yeah. song, which, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. so Chug a Log on the first record is about going to the root beer stand and how much they all love to drink root beer. And so we have kind of fallen ass backwards into becoming a Beach Boys podcast slash uh, root beer review podcast. The and root beer report is that segment. That's huh? the segment of the podcast, exactly. And uh, yeah, the, right. we, we've tried so far on the program. We've tried A&W. We've tried Barks. We haven't tried Mug. We have thrown in some of the more artisanal ones, actually. So uh, yeah, we're by the end, we're going to be like sommeliers, but for root beer. It does root beer Well, Vic and I come from the... At come from the Allentown Bethlehem area and we had a beverage company called A Treat. A Treat. It was A Treat, yes. A Space and Treat. A Dash. A Dash Treat. They do a root beer? Yeah, do a nice Are root beer, brown brown can. Brown. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's a requirement. That's great color for root beer, <laughs> brown. <laughs> <laughs> and they got uh not only root beer, but we can talk about birch beer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Birch beer is How, a is a birch beer is awesome. variant. I, I like white birch, birch beer. beer. White birch beer is very good. White birch beer. Tim, you must know that the Pennsylvania Dutch brand uh, white birch beer. You don't know that kind. It's clear. That's not ringing it's a bell. It's clear yeah. birch beer. They don't put any brown in it's it. It's like white. Oh, dog. Yeah, see, oh, there it is. There's, There's the brown, birch beer. my friend. And then they, they also would uh, wow, offer. I like that label. Uh, Sarsaparilla. Uh huh. Sarsaparilla. You're interested in sarsaparilla? What is sarsaparilla? (laughs) From what I understand, sarsaparilla and root beer. The hell's a big blue? Are similar. Oh, that's new. That's new stuff. That looks like Beach Boys. Oh no, that's that's classic. But that's the the, (laughs) big blue. Yeah, it's, that's like the big uh, two-liter bottle of that. You don't want that. If everybody had an ocean, <laughs> it's not good. That's a, so every every uh, birthday party I went to as a kid had. What is that? Big what is, blue. Really? What does that, that taste that's, like that's, yeah, that's, it's it's not good. It just tastes like blue? chemicals. Yeah, blue. If you <laughs> all right, no that's, blue. Taste. That's after my time. I don't remember that at all. Oh, man. Hi, this is Mike Love for a treat. Talk about big blue, <laughs> new beverage. That you gotta get at your backyard barbecue for uh, the summertime. There's even a yeah. There's even a, a surfer on the <laughs> bottle there. <Yeah. laughs> when I when I need something cool, refreshing, and tastes great, I head to the fridge for my A treat, my big blue. Put that guy in one Everybody of my Everybody be surfing. <laughs> it's just seawater. It's just seawater with <laughs> blue in it. It looks like Windex. <laughs> <laughs> it's Windex. You just put the spray thing yeah, on it right top. In. It screws right on. Just like. <laughs> spray it right in your mouth. All the California girls be loving Big Blue. You can clean your windows and refresh your your taste buds. Boy, do mixology where you I actually have a Big Blue w- rinsed glass, and then I put in the the, the root beer. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> Rinse your glass out with some big that's, blue. That's going to be us in like two years on the show. Like, not talking about music anymore. Just <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I'd be happy. All right. So, uh, whatever. Uh, let's do the city of the day, right? Sure, fucking why not? Cares, fucking cares. <laughs> it's just... Wait, sorry. I got to get my shit. Mike Love always has to put in a Be- Beach Boys lyric into any t- any time he's talking. It's like a affect. Fun, fun. All right, the city of the day. Hold on, do I read this, man? I I think so. Shit. All right. Is it in there? I'm on it. I'm I didn't on check it. it out today. We got a big new sponsor, everybody. Big Blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> City of the Day is sponsored by Bob's Cobb's Harmono Corn Holder. Do you love eating corn but hate having to hold the damn cob? Well, so does Bob Dylan. That's why he invented Bob's Cobb's Harmo- <laughs> Harmo- <laughs> Harmonicorn Harmonicorn. Holder. Harmonicorn. Harmonicorn Holder. The world's only freewheeling corn cob holder. 
but these times are changing. Now you can eat corn and do anything you want with your hands at the same time. <laughs> you can weld custom wrought iron gates, be a Mr. Tambourine Man, or even organize your basement tapes. Bob recommends you handle it with care if you have braces to avoid getting blood on the tracks. Also, Bob advises that you don't look back while using Bob's cobs or you might get tangled up in corn. So don't think twice. Order now and receive a free John Popper tactical vest that holds up to 22 cobs. Soon you'll be chomp, chomp, chomping on heaven's corn. Available exclusively at Kroger.com slash like a rolling cob. Now let's bring it all back home with a jingle. Chomp, chomp, chomping on heaven's corn. <laughs> chomp, chomp, chomping on heaven's corn, baby. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that's Beautiful. it. That's, that's, that's a jingle. That's all you need. I, 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 I wish it was chomp, chomp, chomping on Kevin's corn. <laughs> Next time. All right. Who's the damn city of the day, for Christ's sake? Spencer. What's the city of the day? Spencer. Spencer for hey, hire. Robert we'll Ulrich. Present, we'll present the city of the day. How do you do? Hi, We're Spencer. Great. Honored to be on the show. Big you fan. ever watch Spencer for Hire? No, but I've heard the name from pretty much everyone, you know. <laughs> Such a boring a big show, deal. man. Robert Robert yeah. Ulrich. Get yeah, Robert yeah. Ulrich up on the screen, guys. Come on. It was like you'd watch Spencer for Hire, then he, you'd have to he, watch he, Hunter. He was he was a cop, right? Or a detective? Yeah. Well, he's a for hire. He's a you know Private he's for dick. hire. <laughs> There oh, he is. spells his name that, that way. Huh? S E R. Oh, huh? yeah, that seems like a mistake. Oh, that's just <laughs> great logo. That's is that not Luke right. Gossett Jr.? Who's the Who's the the black guy with him? Hmm. That's not Spencer. Ron McLarty? I don't. I'm trying to find it. It's one of those names. Like anyway, I've Spencer, heard. what is the city of the day? I forgot to ask you. We're here in Las Vegas. Ooh, Ooh. Wow, right. heard of it? Here for opening night yeah. of the Dead and Company. Oh, you're gonna beat the Sphere. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Sphere, baby. Wow. What I didn't realize that they were I thought the fish was there. Or there they were. They were, but they were just the they were warming it up for the dead, yeah. What? Oh my god. Oh, how long how many god, nights yeah. are the dead and company gonna be there for? They're gonna be here all summer, so you'll have plenty of chances to come out here if you feel like it. Yeah, yeah, all through August. Every weekend pretty much. But yeah, I just happened to be down in California and drove up for opening night. So I love yeah. pretty Wow. Movie. So did you see the show? It's tonight. It's tonight. Oh, yeah. I see. I got in last night, yeah. Jokerman, where are you at with the dead? Thumbs up. Good we're, music. More fans yeah. of the dead. You know, they uh How about how about Johnny how about Johnny, John Mayer? You know. What can honestly, you say? Yeah. I, I saw I saw the uh the Dead and Co. at uh Oracle Park up in San Francisco last year when they billed yeah. it as their final tour ever. And now here yeah, they now are. Here they are. Yeah. Here they are well, again. It, it was their last tour. This isn't a tour. This is a residence. Is, okay, oh, sure. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm Charlie Brown yeah. with the football over here. Perpetual. Um, yeah. <laughs> John. Uh, John actually had a little bit of swag to him up on stage. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of uh, as if it's it's John Mayer. Of course, he, it's all he's got. He's I up mean, there with like big not. cans on and like a Patagonia fleece. It's a very different vibe than right. the Grateful Dead and like Jerry and stuff. But if you can like kind of get into it, uh, you know, it's it, it's good. He's hmm. good at playing guitar. They they all seem oh. to get along, you know. Yeah, I heard some of that yeah. Dead and Company on one of, on that Sirius XM station a few years ago, and with him, and it was like, yeah, this is better than better than the original. Yeah, than the ori- than <laughs> better than the original than Jerry? Dead. <laughs> nice yeah, well, slow. better than like you know eighty like like the Grateful Dead eighty seven in you know like that era of just a total mess. Total shit show of sound. Grateful Dead '87. Uh, that's that's Grateful Dead and Bob co-headlining tour. Yeah, those are exactly. notorious. That's some, rough, yeah. that's some rough stuff. Not very Jokerman mindset of you, Tim. <laughs> but no. uh, well, I think it's. Per- I mean, it can be bad. Uh, most yeah. people. I think it's a fairly common uh, perspective that the the Dylan and the Dead period is not a great period for either of them, right? Well, the one thing that we'll say in defense of that is that the record's not so good, but there's individual, if you really delve right. in, there's if some good ahead, performances. You find the right tapes, there the are bootlegs, there yeah. are better ones. It's yeah. still it's still shambolic, uh, but yeah. it's less shambolic than it is on that 
horrendous officially released LP. Right. Well, Dylan wanted to be in The Grateful Dead, and he was voted. They did a vote, and I think Phil Lesh Phil was Lesh. A, a, ostensibly the one who made it not happen. Sunny days are here again. Hi, this is Tim Heidecker, your Office Hours host, letting you know about Factor Meals. It's time to meet your wellness goals in time for the summer, and Factor is here to help you. They've got chef-crafted meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes. They're dietitian approved and will help you kickstart a new healthy routine for the summer. I know you're all asking, what are Tim's current top faves? Well, I'll tell you. The filet mignon and mushroom risotto and the calorie smart Greek chicken and tomato penne pasta. Those are my top picks that you just can't go wrong with. But guess what? They have 35 different meal options every week with over 60 add-ons available. So if you can't find something you like, well, that's on you, buddy. What are you waiting for? Head to factormeals.com slash officehours50 and use code officehours50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code officehours50 at factormeals.com slash officehours50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Wow. Phil Lesh, I mean, if you're going to rank the worst members of the Grateful Dead in order of worst <laughs> to best, Pig pen. where do you put Phil Lesh? I think it's pretty high on that list. I think he's somewhere in the middle. Personality wise, or just. Uh, I think you got to take everything into account. I think musicianship, personality, whether they're. their l- l- longevity. <laughs> There's a book that's about the post breakup. Of yeah, the I read Dead, that and book. And he and his wife do not come He's off a well in there. He's so. a Mike Love character in that book. He's a yeah. Mike Lovecraftian, <laughs> Mike Lovecraftian yeah. man. There's I would say you bit. go. I w- for me it would be, um, and let's not talk about like the adjunct members or. I mean, I guess I don't know enough about it, but I would go like Mickey Hart number one as far as worst, <laughs> then. <laughs> Phil Lesh, then uh, Weir, Krutzman, Garcia. Jerry, Jerry the best. Jerry the best. Yeah. 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 I think that sounds about right. <laughs> I, 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 th- I agree with Jerry the best, but I don't want to get like, uh, you know, dogpiled you by don't want to be people yeah. who like know yeah. a, a lot about <laughs> Phil Lesh. He's always like on the verge of dying too. It seems that Phil Lesh. He's always has like he's still touring diabetes. Isn't he like blood? 90? He has like a liver transplant, and hepatitis, and all this stuff. He has made it through. He's he's active uh, uh, up in San Francisco. He's playing a show like this week at the Fillmore, I think. Wow. I will say this: I'm not everyone on this show knows that I don't I don't like the Grateful Dead. They're not in my they're not in my top 10. Or They're like your least but, favorite band that you listen to all the time. <laughs> but I listen to them all the time now. And the one record that just came out, it's like, I don't know what this is. It's called The Angel. It's the Live from Mars Hotel. Yeah, uh, uh, Like an a- Angel Remixes, it's called, I think. It just, it's like some kind of bootleg, you know, official bootleg thing of uh, ver- other takes. And uh, I like it. Look at that. There you go. Yeah, that's the Jokerman mindset right there. It's got the uh, what's it called, begonias on there. Scarlet, loose, begonia. loose. Scarlet begonias, and then um, ship. What's the ship one? Uh, Scarlet ship. Ship of fools. Ship of fools. Sure. Anyone? Our third Mike, Stephen Hyden, would know the answer to every single. <laughs> question he's, here but he's he's shouting at his computer <laughs> screen right now he was kind of the yeah. uh the impetus for joker in some ways because there was a show called 36 from the vault which is about the dicks pick series that he did and it's really good oh. uh mm. f- you don't even have to like the band to to l- like listening to it maybe maybe you do but it helps could you explain dicks picks who's dick who is dick 
Dick Lutt. These Ballin? guys are not the Grateful Dead experts. But they, they, said they both said they love the dead, though. I like him. Like, like him. Winging oh, it. Okay. He was okay. their like, archivist, and uh, oh, okay. he kind of went from being like a fan to being like a really important archivist in an official capacity. And then okay. these picks, the Dick's picks, are the picks that he picked. That he likes the best. The tapes, yeah. exactly. Because okay, okay. the thing with the dead is, you know, you don't yeah, really listen all, to studio records, you listen different, to the tapes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I have a question. Matt, is there anybody on the Hothead hotline? Tim, did... Yeah, let's check in on the hotline. Did yeah, go ahead, and, uh, go ahead, Vic. Did Ignore. the Grateful Dead <laughs> ever tour with the Beach Boys? Yes, did actually. The- well, it yeah. was for Tim. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. What do you uh, think? Yes, actually. <laughs> yes, I, well, I happen yes. to know that they did. Yes, what year What year do you think it was? I'm going to say it was 72. Holy shit. Almost. Exactly. I think it was. It was 71, 72? 71 was the first one, yeah. Yeah, and then 72 they were in there. That's nuts. Wow. Very good. So technically, I'm correct. So like good, yeah. good era for the dead, right? I mean... Sort of, right? Weren't they? Yeah, yeah, no, that yeah. Was, those were like game. early days. Yeah, yeah Europe yeah. seventy two. That's like yeah, a legendary yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, wow. They, didn't they play? They played the Fillmore together, right? Fillmore East. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And then there was like all this uh, stuff that basically Mike Love is saying. Like, <laughs> it would have been like a nice surprise, but I think he like made it into this thing where it's like, how like psychedelic? How about this? Huh? It's stuff like that. If I'm. <laughs> I'm not just sure. using like lingo at the time to desperately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, didn't, uh, they tour, yeah. didn't they tour with like the Maharishi one year? The Beach oh, Boys. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. That yeah. was a disaster. Though they, yeah, they 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 went on like a countrywide tour with the Maharishi, where the Maharishi <laughs> was going to open and just talk to people, and then the Beach yeah. Boys were going to come out and play, and they didn't sell any tickets. They had to cancel it after like a <laughs> week because it was a complete disaster. Because he was kind of exposed at that time, right? The Maharishi was. He, he had kinda? been exposed, yeah. but for whatever reason, Mike. Specifically, Mike, Mike he's, stuck with him. He's yeah. still with it. Yeah, yep. he's still. So yeah. let that say what it says about transcendental meditation. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know what it says. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's pretty well. I mean, it's, it, yeah. I think transcendental meditation is fairly legitimate now. It's a fairly well respected. Mike Love, Jerry practice. Seinfeld. Yeah, Seinfeld. David and, Lynch. Yeah. Howard Howard Stern. David Lynch. Whatever gets you through the day. David Lynch. You know, he's like the. It's yeah. like it's like. The transcendental meditation for Mike it just makes him more evil. Like exactly. it just, <laughs> that's the it's thing. Just I like su- opposite. I suspect you know? it just helps you focus on whatever you were gonna do. Right, right, right. right. Focus on, and he's but he's like this right wing guy today, like hardcore with him and Bruce. But like back in like the '60s, '70s, '80s, he was this like super left guy. Like he was like big into uh, worried about the environment and everything. He's writing all these songs about it, but. Now he's just yeah. like, given up on that kind of, I guess. He's, seems like. Well, that's what happens to all these old yeah, timers. You know, old. Bill Maher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Mar- Love. Yeah. We got to get him. We got to get Bill. We got to get Mike Love on <laughs> Club Random. That, yes. that, oh, that oh, would God. be some podcast I would magic die right there. If that happened. My God. Do you know that uh, in 72, like, uh, Mike tried to drop the boys from the name? Do you know that? You yeah. Just go by Beach. Okay. You guys are already. The there. Beach. <laughs> I just thought that was You're cool. not going to stump the Joker, idea? man. Yeah. I know. I'm trying to stump you guys. Yeah. Well, let's stump the Joker, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah that's, a, yeah. that's a, yeah. That's, yeah. What do you got? Them. You got a clip? Anybody got anything? You. Who, oh, I thought we. You, I thought we took a call and then I started talking. So we did take. Oh a yeah, call. we did. That's true. Or no, I didn't Sorry. unmute him yet. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that caller. Two oh eight. I believe it's Spokane. You're on the line. Spokane, are you there? I blew it. Hey, I, morning. Oh, there we go. Good morning. Uh, hey, so uh, I got some music puns. I'm wondering if you guys are into goth or new wave music. I didn't write any Beach Boys puns. I didn't know it was going to be a Beach Boys episode, but I got some goth new wave puns. Do you want to hear these? <laughs> of course. Maybe three three of them? <laughs> so, Okay, so I got my bank statement today, and there's a negative balance on there. I'm like, what the hell? So I call my bank, and I say, is this a mistake? And they go, oh, sorry, I was a mistake. It was a typo negative. Mm. Uh, uh, Peter I uh, got my new glasses from the optometrist the other day, and uh, I said, "These are great, thanks, Doc." And he said, "Yeah, you're welcome. Enjoy the vision." Enjoy uh, the vision. I got this impressionist <laughs> oh, friend. Oh. Uh, I see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got this impressionist friend, and I ask him, "Hey, can you do Joe Pesci?" And he says, "Okay, let me see if I can get into the Pesci mode." Oh. Ah, that's the best uh. one. Okay, right, last those were one. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh. those were three. Those were three. Thank you got to know your be- you, you got to know your limits. Got to leave them wanting more. Good night, chump. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 
<laughs> oh, they hung up themselves. Oh, that was Whoa. good. I was into it. <laughs> three was my three's limit. A limit. I think three That's is the right number. I think yeah, three is a magic number. About to you gotta bust. leave them wanting more. Mm-hmm. You want to, Vic? You have some stuff you're trying to stump oh, yeah, the Jokerman with um, the lifestyle. I was gonna say if anybody calls in and, and wants to stump too, that could be a thing. Oh yeah, we actually we did get uh, somebody sent. This is sort of Duncan. Dunkles. Duncan will set it up. Duncan. Oh. This is. Hey, Duncan. There we go. I'm um, huge fan. Rocking my Jokerman shirt. Uh, oh, you got the Z on it. Salute. <laughs> a rarity. Yeah. It's, uh, other caller mentioned two favorite, well, favorite podcast and favorite TV show. Um, so super excited to be on with you guys. Um, I just wanted to share my favorite YouTube clip, maybe ever. Um, it's the Beach Boys on Baywatch, and it's an original oh, yeah. single. <laughs> Mike Love raps, essentially, and Brian Johnson looks uh, miserable. So um, with that, Bruce Johnson. Uh, I love Bruce. You. Love to hear you Whoa, guys. Is, is this a those stump? drums? Yeah. Is this a stump? And I, I appear, that looks like uh, John on the drums. Yeah, it's John Stamos on yeah. drums. Yeah, Dennis, I believe, is he's, dead. He's at point. this point. Yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> and he's been replaced by robot and, drums and, right, jo- and John, John Stamos. Stamos. I can't wait to Oof. Oh. Is this a stump or not? Have you guys seen it? Electric drums on the Ooh, beach. Oh, look at Brian. Good Lord. Oh, my God. See, Brian didn't want to do this. Like to get together. Oh no. Love vacation. Oh, this is when Al had the ponytail. It's another drummer there. <laughs> Putting cool. Brian, this is abuse. Putting Brian, yeah, it totally, this. it's totally abuse. He he did not consent to this. There he is. Oh. Look at that. Wow. Why? But who's this for? Who's Carl? Us. Who is like? I. This is great. I'm glad that they did this. This makes sense. Oh, no. That's come on. Oh. Well, it's a love thing. <laughs> oh, get him out of here. That's too much of that. <laughs> wow. Christ. He horrendous. looks good, clean shaven, though. He does. Look, I mean, looks, it's a good era. Kind of looks him. like a governor. This is where he's trying to this. <laughs> threw him in the back Lord. of the truck. I think this is considered the nadir uh, of this, is, this era. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, th- just to make it clear, this is not Jokerman mindset, whatever <laughs> is going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's the kind, cost. Kind of, it's uh, the price of Jokerman mindset. It's like it, it, it's just, this it, is what it, it we uh, have to that's see. True. It, yeah, yeah. It takes the uh, it takes the wind out of your theory about like you know is there success later in life? Well, you had to go through this. Artistically interesting. Yeah, it's darkest yeah. before the dawn. It's a roll of the dice every time. You know, I th- and I think that's like the last thing Carl was ever in too. Wasn't that uh, his last public performance? Poor guy. There's the. Uh, there's the growing pains appearance, not growing pains. The uh, problem full, child. Full they house. meet Stamos. Full, full, house, full house. Full house. Full house. Yeah. Al Jardine was actually on a, a favorite uh, television program of mine, uh, Decker. Yes, that's right. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> can we get a Can we get a screenshot of that up there, Matt? <laughs> well, it's this one. That's one of the best deaths ever on television. It's, if you see him, yes, him getting shot. Just the image of um, Al Jardine next to Joe Estevez <laughs> is. I'm going to be thinking of that like on my deathbed. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason for it at all. It's just. It's really just me and Greg and it's Eric beautiful. collecting. Watch this. Businesses. Watch this death. True, Dr. I guess I underestimated you, Mr. Decker. Yes, it's true. Global warming is a careful and constructive mess. But according to your own constitution, once the president puts pen to paper, there's no turning back. <laughs> we can either have blood or rank on this executive order. It's your choice. Sorry, Jack. I have no alternative. I understand, Mr. President. You know, Richard, there is some good news about global warming. What is it? What's that? You won't need a cold rum about to send you. <laughs> 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 Why did he? 
Do that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I think. We were all really happy with that. That is Jokerman yeah. mindset. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember meeting with him, and he just couldn't figure out why the hell we wanted him to do it. <laughs> you know? Like, I guess. I don't know. Why? Uh, I don't open, know. Open-minded. It's really hard to explain, Al. <laughs> Big mind. But he was very nice. He's very a good nice. sport. Good sport. Yeah. Uh. Well, we've all got another um, root beer uh, going. Um, I don't oh, what do you got now? Well, we, got, we have all three, but uh, let's let's get, shift to Barks, I guess. Mm-hmm. No, Vic's got Vic's got the mug open already. Yeah, let's do with the mug. Let's do. Oh, mug. okay. Well, we haven't done mug before. Well, we'll do mug this. Now. Be a good time for me to check my email. <laughs> yeah, I want you to take a look. <laughs> you're not. It's good that you're not here. Yeah, more of a chemical so, note. Yeah. yeah, it tastes like paint. It's kind of <clears throat> metallic. Yeah, no good. Uh, it like doesn't it. have much flavor, and then it comes at you with a real bad aftertaste. Yeah, no, that is wow, no it's, good. It's foul. You're not missing out too. No bueno. It's also got. Uh, well, that A and W is nice after. Yeah, the A and W makes it nicer at the end. Palate cleanser. I'm gonna take a, sw- a swig of my Schweppes sparkling seltzer water, black cherry flavor. Ooh, black cherry Yum. flavor. That's a, that's a good flavor. It's the best. It's it's odd how bad this mug uh, mug is. Zero stars out of three. Yeah, that's 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 no good. That's Can you explain your three star? You know, I have I've, uh, there's a legend uh, legendary rating system that I've de- we've developed on on cinema with the five bags. Right. But- can you? This is which is purely facetious, but you have a you have strong thoughts on the star system, and you have a firm three star system, which is a little controversial. But could you explain that? Well, it's one, two. Or three stars, <laughs> and you can do zero stars if you if you're really if you're upset like I am. But now. no, but no half stars. No it's half stars. Whole numbers yeah. only. And so it sort of uh, it makes clear I think when you try to do this when you incorporate it that there's a necessity and for nuance in life. And sometimes it's like one star, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like one star out of three. I want to make so, some kind of a statement about I didn't really care for this. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. three is perfect. Sometimes three is it's so good. I I'm a fool to ask for better. Sometimes two is you know uh, it's the best thing ever. But yeah. for some reason I don't want to give it three. There's something about it gives, has a bad vibe or something to it. That yeah. That kind of yeah. Like oh I respect I respect it but I don't love it. Right. Your one two, two three drop Vic. I oh I I, I got them all here. I like this because. Uh, you know, the opposite of this is when you get into like this pitchfork thing with like seven point three, and you're like, it gets there's too broad a spectrum. Yeah, it was. I think you're right. It was our uh, sort of us trying to do the opposite of the pitchfork rating system. Is right. how it came about. Less precise with the numbers, but I think emotionally and spiritually more accurate mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, I think so too. Do you want to go uh, deeper? You, are you? Are you are you pretty um, stingy with the threes, or is it you know, like not what necessarily? Does it mean? Pet sounds gets a three. Pet and sounds then... will be a three. Yeah, yeah. I think that the part of at least for my my way of approaching it is that like shut out everything that you've ever done until you're like while you're doing it. So it's like right uh, now three. Sure, you can always do it again later, but right. It's it, yeah, I think I think part of it is, you know, with the pitchfork numbers in particular, like, you know, they're all on the same scale. They're all 100, and you can rate, you know, here's this record's got a 7.2, this record's got a 7.3. With the three-star system, it's just you don't want to compare the stars of one rating to the stars of another rating. Yeah, it's sure. just this is one, two, or three, and then something else yeah. can also be one, two, or three. You like get in that impulse to be like, oh, I want to be more specific. That's where you have to say, no, no, no. To yourself, because then you end up doing doing pitchfork stuff of being like, actually, it's like a, more of a point four, don't you think? And mm-hmm. it's like, right. you cut it out. Right. Two, right. one, two, three. I like it. I, I think of that like you go in that system. Like three would be what I I, I could listen to at any time, and I, I it moves me, you know. And uh, oh, we got some speaking of well, movement. We were supposed oh, to. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry about that. I get very confused <laughs> easily. But no. But then. But then I would give two, or it, it's like I love something, but it's not. I don't want to hear it every day, sure. or I want to hear it certain only certain times, or something like that. You know? Yeah, it, there's a huge range, but yeah. you have a very few d- decisions. Right, exactly. One, two, or three. Yeah, or zero. 
mug uh, root beer. Zero. Zero, Zero stars. Zero. Unquestionable. It's really wow. Can we try the barks? Is that like... Well, we'll, you well, say, well let's, 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 let's tease that. Let's okay, tease okay. that. We're we're we don't have to run into here. that right now. Yeah, barks is a second half swig, I think, right? There you go. And, and we have a lot of video. You guys brought a lot of uh, clips to check out. Yeah. Right? There's, there's, clips. Yeah, should we take a look at a clip before Yeah, let's do a quick clip before the music. Let's. Maybe he's here. I might hear his van clunking around out there. Still waiting on Johnny Cosmo. Which uh, what clip do you want to get into? Ooh, why don't we do uh, the 1976 uh, interview with Brian? I like this. Oh it's boy, beautiful. Looks like a uh, there's a couple interrogation ti- video. Yeah, there's a couple timestamps <laughs> on there that uh, take us to some good. Yeah, we got 650. Some good. I don't sections. like Mike Love at all. <laughs> you got back from Holland, Brian, because that's the point then that I didn't hear well, very that's much when my about what you would, period started. Yeah. I started there. Uh, generally what what i considered a recluse period where i was confined in my bedroom i was taking drugs i was snorting cocaine which i don't uh agree with i mean i don't uh get behind anyone snorting cocaine it's a very bad drug but i did and i did it i had a lot of money of course i'm a millionaire and and uh, i was able to get a hold of all these drugs you know and they fucked <laughs> I was able to get a hold of all these drugs and they messed me up. They uh, they messed the mind up. Mm. So so how did you begin to get the motivation to, to start playing and recording with the band again? What did it happen first in the studio? Well, what happened was I uh, was called my wife called a doctor, Dr. Gene Landy. Oh, and oh, I yeah. began a series of experiments with them uh, for rehabilitation. <laughs> social control and social grace and uh, uh, series of therapy meetings and uh, he's got the lip thing though you can see Tim you you were on the money with the lips uh, yeah yeah come back into my own and and, and between my wife the doctors and my brothers and my mother and a couple friends they all convinced me to get out of my room get back in there in the studio and get to work Mm. which I did and and I'm very grateful for because uh, it's making me a lot of money and it's making people happy, which is my first goal. Mm. To make people happy. Because uh, uh, when I wow, that's Brian. And he's the, clearly not out of the woods in any with any kind of uh, mental illness. No, it wasn't situation. until the late '80s that the Landy thing ended. Eugene Landy yeah. was the terrible. Uh, Helper, like, what's his title? I don't Technically, know. he was a therapist a of quack. some sort, but yeah, he was basically kind of you know running Brian's life for some period of time. Ruining Brian. Who's the life. Who's the Russian guy that he's like a real Rasputin? Rasputin, exact, literally, exactly. Yeah, but like not yeah. as cool. Should have shot. <laughs> Should have shot him and drowned him in a river. <laughs> well, um, man, he does love. Doing interviews without with his shirt open. Well, that's the thing. That that period of time, we should set some context. In 1976, it's kind of when he's coming back. Uh, basically, every time he emerged out into public, he was in his pajama suit. So that was just his standard, his standard, right. his standard outfitting. Uh, some beautiful satin pajamas. Yeah, it's good. And uh, did he get bigger from? It was because like he yeah. got really big. Yeah, he was he it was large large for a time. <laughs> but there there's a story in his autobiography about that time when his daughter is coming home from school in the school bus and he runs out into the street shirtless and he runs up to the school bus and he's like huge and uh he he knocks on the school bus door and he's like can can you light my cigarette (laughs) oh my god is that interview um pre is that that's right around uh, beach boys love you maybe he's recording love you when that interview is that's one of my favorite that's one of my favorites. It's one of the very best. Yeah, that's Brian's back, and uh, you know he gets to do whatever he wants. And he, I'll like, give you a little a little scoop. I had this idea for the show Moonbase Eight that I did with John and Fred. Mm. One of my first ideas was that because these guys are trapped in a uh, on like a moon on a moon simulator, you know, like we're cut off from the rest of the world, and I thought it would be the coolest idea if. The only piece of music they had was Beach Boys Love You. Oh my God! And so, like every, almost like a like a uh, uh, Groundhog's Day kind of thing, where just the beginning of that record, that doom, 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 I get to bum 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 bum, like that's playing every morning. It's a good way to keep your mental health up. I think that is a great. 
um, needle drop song that I don't think I've heard used. That what's that one called? So God, heavy. please let us go God, on our way. Please God, let us please go on this way. This way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's so heavy and abrasive. So heavy. And then yeah. they come in with the beautiful Beach Boys harmonies. Love you. Anyone out there who hasn't heard it from 1977? That's uh, you got to go. The, the Run, only don't drums walk. on that album are just Brian and a snare drum. Oh God, it's so inartful. Well, but it's beautiful at the same time. It's considered kind of a pioneering record of synth pop in retrospect. Yeah. It, a lot, a lot of, of synths on it. Yeah, a lot Brian of on the Moog. Bass. Yeah. All right, let's um, transition to our musical guest. Matt, what's the update on the musical guest? Because I know there was some confusion. Uh, well, it's you're not going to believe who showed up here. Bob Dylan is actually here. <gasps> which with his corn holders. With he left the corn holder at home. Um, wow. So we'll get to him in a second. He's still uh, putting his harmonica stand on. Uh, I just want to give everyone a heads up that um, we have, we're going to show after the break. So we're going to sh- have Bob do a song. and then uh, Bob Dylan's going to do a song. Bob Dylan's going to do a song. Bob Dylan is From the here. Traveling Wilburys. Bob Dylan. That Bob Dylan. Lefty Jacob's Wilbury. dad. Oh. Jacob's yeah. dad himself. Um, then we're going to show a new animated video for Doug's extended mix of the Jummies Growling Gummies jingle animated by uh-huh. Nico Daunt. Featuring Layla that makes, Roy. That all makes sense. Yeah, you got all that. Uh, and then we'll take a little break, and then we'll come back. If you're watching live, stick around. If you're watching a replay, go to patreon.com slash Live. Join us for a free seven-day trial. Thank you for handling that, Matt. So without further ado, from uh, um, Hibbings, Minnesota. Hibbing, Minnesota. Is that correct, guys? That's yes, right. That's Hibbing? right. Hibbing, Minnesota. Now living in Malibu and on the road is Bob Dylan playing some Beach Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's me, Bob Dylan. I live in Malibu now. Point Doom. I'm going to play some songs. Uh, Johnny couldn't make it. I was hanging out down. Got a call. I was having a couple cups of coffee. Uh... Down a kitchen mouse and got a call. We're gonna play a song, an old song called Little Honda. And Vic's gonna sing with us. Go. Go. I'll wake you up early because I wanna take a ride with you. Go down to the Honda shop I'll tell you what we're gonna do Put on a ragged sweatshirt I'll take you anywhere you want me to First gear It's alright Second gear Well, 
When I woke up this morning And I saw your spouse How many times are we gonna go out to New Mexico towns? All I wanna do is hang out with a cup of coffees at Kitchen Mouse The first gear is alright The second gear, hang around Well, third gear show.